Hello friends and neighbors. Uh, this week we will be installing an FTP server onto a Windows VPS machine. Doesn't matter if it's a VPS, but that's what we're doing it on. We are doing it on a VPS kindly provided by the awesome folks at GG Hosting. You can pick up a VPS with a 10% discount on order by using the promo code SCHWIM, S-C-H-W-I-M as in Michael. All right, let's get to brass tacks. You need to move files to a remote server. That just always happens in the end. Uh, with Linux, you usually connect uh, through a terminal and you can move files in a lot of different ways doing that. Uh, with Windows servers though, um, you usually connect with a graphical uh, front end. So like RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol, which is what we're using right here. Uh, you end up with what looks like your computer at home if you're using Windows, which is pretty awesome for uh, being kind of familiar. But when you need to move files back and forth, it gets a little uh, clunky and disjointed. So what we're going to do is we are going to install an FTP server, file transfer protocol server, onto this Windows machine so we can then connect with an FTP app from any machine anywhere around the world and move files to it. And just like when we installed the uh, web server, the WAMP server, um, there's just a metric crap ton of different apps to choose from to do this. What we're going to use is, is FileZilla. Uh, FileZilla is a um, open source server and client. So I use it for the client on all my machines that need a uh, FTP app. And we're also going to use the server uh, as uh, the daemon for this machine. So the very first thing we want to do is visit FileZilla. All right. The free FTP solution. And you don't want the client on this machine because this is the remote machine. Um, so we are going to download the server. And we're going to download the server for Windows. And that is it. We'll open that up. And we'll close our browser. Uh, we are going to tell Windows that we trust this file. All right. Accept the agreement. And you can leave the components the way they are. Uh, there's nothing weird. You don't need the source code on this machine because you're not modifying the, the server code. So click Next. You can also leave the default install location usually. You'll know if you can't, but the default program file location is fine. And you can also leave that port the same. That is for the interface, for the administrative interface. It is not for the FTP server itself. So just leave it the way it is. You don't need to change it. And go ahead and accept that the server will start after the install. And you want to leave this the way it is. So as soon as the user logs on, uh, the FTP daemon will start listening. We'll start up and begin listening for connections. Um, you don't want to start it manually because if the machine ever restarts, uh, your FTP server wouldn't restart with it. So we're going to leave it the same. Okay, so start if the user logs on and you apply it to all users. Click install. And once that's done, go ahead and close it and the administrative program should start up and you just leave this the way it is. 
So what we are going to do is we're going to create the user or identity that logs into this server to modify files. So to do that, you're going to go to Edit, Users, add a username, click OK, choose Password, set it, and go to Shared Folders, click Add, and this is going to be the space that you allow them to work in. And we're going to use the subdirectory 5m under the drive. And this is something important that you need to keep in mind. The user logging in only has access to the folder that you set, the folder or drive that you set, in anything inside of that, what they call recursive. Uh, so anything in what you set and stuff inside that recursively, folder after folder after folder, can be modified. Nothing above it can be modified. That user is like imprisoned in that directory. So if you set the root drive, drive C, as their workable folder, that user logging in has the capability of wiping out everything on that drive. So this is something super important to keep in mind when you create the user and the folders that they're allowed to work in. Never set the root drive as your working folder. Always set some kind of subdirectory. Always keep them restricted outside of the system files. So we're going to use the 5M folder as the workable directory. And here's another important part. Um, by default, they only have read access if you look. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to give them writing, deleting, appending, creating, and deleting of directories. And then we are going to click OK. And that user is done being created. All right. So you've created the user, you've got the file server running. There's one more thing you have to do because for some reason, FileZilla server does not modify Windows Firewall. So if you were to try to connect right now, it would just stall out, um, timeout. So we're gonna go ahead and type in Firewall and open it, okay? Once you got it open, Go ahead and create a new rule, all right? And we're going to set a program. And you want to choose a program path and go to where you installed FileZilla. All right, you do not want to use the interface executable because that's not the one that needs to get through the firewall you want to set FileZilla server.exe as the program that you want to allow through the firewall. So click that. Once you're done with that, click Next. Allow the connection. So click Next and leave all three of those checked. Click Next. And so you can find it in the list, go ahead and type in FileZilla FTP application and click finish. All right, you're done with that on that side. Let's go ahead and see if we can connect to the FTP program through a client. All right, on the client side, what we're going to do is go ahead and create uh, the profile to connect to. So you just need three things. You need the IP address, or the domain name that you're connecting to. You need the uh, username and password, and that's it. And we didn't change anything from the default settings, so you don't really have to mess with anything else. So what we're going to go ahead and do and uh, set up is our client connection. So I've created the profile. We're going to go ahead and put in your IP address or uh, domain name, whatever you're using to connect. And the thing about this is 
Um, if you're running a server with multiple domains, it doesn't matter. Any domain that makes it to that server can be used um, because you're connecting to the port that FTP is listening to. So it wouldn't overlap with other. If you add two do domain names, domain1.com, domain2.com, all pointing to that server, uh, it wouldn't matter whether you used domain1.com or domain2.com in the host because both of those domains point to that server and FTP is listening on the specified port on that whole machine. So you can use anything you want that makes it to that server. And we're going to use plain FTP. We're going to use normal and not anonymous. And we're going to put in our username and our uh, password. So close your eyes. Don't look. All right, you can look. And we're going to click connect. All right, you were done. You have connected successfully to the Windows VPS. Um, so if I were to go into program files, you would see there's the file Zilla server uh, files that we talked about. So you are completely connected um, and you're done. You can use this to move files to and from that machine now uh, by just opening up your FTP client, adding the host, username, and password, click Connect, and you are done. And that's it for this video. Short and sweet. Got it done. Get you moving some files like it's cool. And uh, I'll talk to you guys next time. Have a good one.